Hey guys, Henning and Morten from Flip Normals. And in today's ZBrush Cowboy video, we are going to be making tile balls in ZBrush. So that's a, I don't even know if it's a requested thing. It's just something we've been wanting to do for a long time. So, you know, as you might know, one of us, me, has sculpted a lot of rocks before, but that doesn't mean that I'm necessarily good at sculpting rocks. But uh, that, that has meant that I've been wanting to create tileables and stuff, so I don't have to do that as much anymore. And um, in ZBrush, there's a way to sculpt in a tileable way, which sounds kind of weird if you're not familiar with the concept. And there are some pitfalls with the sort of standard ZBrush way of doing it. So um, we're going to show you a method of creating tileables that always work within ZBrush, you, not just for rocks. I mean, you could sculpt anything, whether it's like veins that are a tileable texture, like a skin texture, it could be really anything. Yeah, these maps you, you're making here as well, they can also be used for whatever purpose. If you want to yeah. use them in Painter or as a tileable in Maya, whatever it might be. I've, I've done I've done something similar to this before where I've uh, taken taken maps and used them in Mari. Mm. Just really sculpt them up and yeah. use them as bump maps in Mari. We we have a separate tutorial on that as well, which is which is kind of related to this. That's how to take an image from like it might be something of elephant elephant skin, processing in Photoshop and sculpting it up. Yeah. So that's uh, that's something you can check out as well. So first off, um, I've seen a few tutorials around that use uh, external um, planes and stuff and imports. You don't need to do any of that. So we're going to keep everything within ZBrush just to keep it simple. So first we have a plane 3D, make it a poly mesh. There we go. Now we have poly mesh. So now we can start sculpting on it. So the feature that we're looking for is under brush. And if you go down to curve, there we go. It's the wrap mode. So set it to one. And now you're going to start to sculpt sort of across the plane, which is super cool. Uh, you can uh, set it to two and then you have more tiling within the plane. So, so you're already, I mean, you're already creating a tileable. So I don't know if you would need this. Maybe, maybe there's a specific use case where you, you do need that though. The issue with the standard way of doing this in ZBrush is that, so if you're just using the standard brush like this, everything's going to be fine as long as you don't, take your uh, pen off of the tablet, hmm. everything will be fine. But as soon as you start the next stroke, this is going to happen. So you're going to get all this weird stuff here. So all of a sudden, our, our texture isn't going to be tileable anymore. So a hacky way around this is to, um, well, I guess it's hard to explain, but it's to use two planes to offset where ZBrush kind of looks. But we need to prep a little before that. So the first thing we're going to do is set the canvas to the dimensions of well, I guess what we want to grab our dock with. I mean, it doesn't need to be exactly the same, but as long as it's a square format. Yeah, so this is going to be the resolution of, of the final texture. Yeah, so I'm creating a 1024 texture by 1024. And let's see, resize. There we go. So just clear your canvas. Pop it back in there. So uh, here in the default UI, I just have this zoom thing out here just so we can actually see. Um, let's just change the... Uh, range a little bit. Oh, getting a gradient in there. Um, just so you can see where the canvas actually actually ends. So uh, again, you could start sculpting with the wrap mode here, but we're still going to be facing the same issue, even though we've got like the canvas cropped and everything. So this is where our second plane is going to come in. And we just the F key to mm. to frame it so it fits perfectly. So uh, Shift Control D to duplicate your plane. So now we have two planes. So the top plane here. We're going to rename that to camera plane. This is going to be the focus of our camera when we press F again. And the second plane here is going to be our sculpting plane. This is what we'll be sculpting on. So what we need to do is just activate the gizmo and move out the second plane just, just a little bit. It doesn't need to be much. And then you need to scale this up. Now, I'm just I'm not going to use the gizmo just because like Maybe I don't get it perfectly where I want it. So I'll just go to deformation and then find size and scale this up a bit. So we've got something like this. We just need it to be offset basically. Um, and then we just need it to be big enough so that we never uh, touch the borders once we actually start sculpting. So if we go back to our sub tools, back to our camera plane, now we can frame on this camera plane and be sculpting on the top plane. It's very important that perspective mode isn't turned on for this, just because it can mess up your, your tiling. So frame in on this, just do it once. And then you can see 
now we're we're sculpting on the on the top plane. If we were to frame on this, now we're going to be seeing the borders of the top plane. You see there, but we want to see the borders of the camera plane. So now when we start to sculpt, this is going to wrap perfectly without distorting any of the edges. So just to give you a more real world example, let's go to geometry and let's just subdividing it. You can turn off uh, smooth subdivide if you want to, but with this bigger plane, it doesn't, doesn't really matter. Usually the issue is if you have smooth on, the borders are gonna be, be like smooth as well. Uh, that's, that's totally up to you. So just subdivide that a few times. Let's go back to our camera plane. Make sure that you always remember to go back to your camera plane if you do any sort of camera changes. So there we go. Now everything is gonna be tiling perfectly. And we're not going to be getting any of the border distortion because we're, we're framed in on the camera plane. Um, so it's a, it's a interesting little ZBrush workaround where you can just, I don't know, like there's so many things in ZBrush that you think should just work, but they never do. Um, so there's always like clever ways to get around it. <laughs> if you're a texture artist, I highly recommend that you spend some time doing these kind of textures. Whenever you're texturing, particularly my, my background is from texturing creatures, and whenever you're texturing something like well, like any creature, you end up using around three maps at the end. In the beginning, you start off with like 200 maps, and you go through it, you <laughs> go through like dinosaurs and all, all sorts of animals, get as much reference as you can. But then you find yourself that maybe up to like four images is what you're using for practically everything. Yeah. This is what we did for when we textured Pacific Rim as well. We um, we got a few images like this, sculpted them up in ZBrush, made them tileable, and then uh, textured them in Mari using these maps. And you really aren't using a lot of different maps. One thing to note here is that not, not all brushes are gonna be working with the wrap mode. And uh, you need to turn this on on a per brush basis. So right now I'm using the standard brush. So if I wanted to go in and like stylize, uh, this texture a little bit uh, with the H polish or something. Right now, it's not going to be wrapping. Just go back to brush, set this to one, and now we can sort of create these clean-looking, uh, stylized—I don't know—World of Warcraft, Darksiders type of rocks. And make sure the wrap mode is set to the same for for all the yeah. brushes. <laughs> That's pretty important. Yeah. Um, like I said before, you know, maybe there's a case uh, where wrap. Uh, you want to set the wrap mode to two if you want more tiling, but I mean, you're creating a tileable anyway, yeah. so you might as well get as, get as much resolution as you can out of like this one piece. Uh, there's no reason, I don't see a reason to tile it more with the wrap mode, no. but I mean, you know, feel free to, to experiment with it. Because then you just, you just have duplicate data on your map. Yeah. Also, when it comes to the final resolution for maps like this, you really don't have to have that much like you don't have to use 4k or 8k maps because if you if you actually look at the maps you're creating here like when you're exporting these out of zbrush then you're going to look at the see that they're very soft because what you're doing now is essentially hand painting something yeah. this doesn't come from photographic reference and it's perfectly translated these lines are incredibly smooth so you know if you have a 2k map or 4k map you mean it really it really doesn't matter a whole lot it just means that your project project gets heavier Okay, so uh, let's uh, let's pretend that this was the greatest rock texture alive. It's a very nice rock texture. And uh, tile scrape. So what you can do now is export this out from ZBrush, and we've already defined our document size. This is going to be the the size of the alpha. So if you just go up to alpha under transfer, uh, grab duck. This is just going to show up under whatever brush you had, and then you can just export it. Looks like I already have one, and then. Just to illustrate to you that it actually works, let's uh, open that exact one again. So this is the new one, and we'll just do the stupid way of uh, of tiling stuff hmm. in Photoshop. There we go. Oh, that was lucky. <laughs> it's always like, oh, does it work? Does it not work? There you hey, go. Hey, there we go. And perfectly tileable texture. Perfectly tileable texture. And you can, you know, then if you're already within ZBrush now, uh, you could just, you know, you could use this immediately. If you, I don't know, go like a displacement brush or something. 
and drag rect, and then you can start dragging this out. And now uh, you already have some pretty cool surface variation with, with rocks. Yeah, very nice stuff. You can use this in ZBrush, Painter, whatever you want to do. Very, very cool stuff. Yeah, so it's very quick to create maps. And, and like we said, it's not just restricted to rocks. This was just like, rocks is always just a great example mm. um, because everyone just loves to create rocks. <laughs> yeah, it's one of these things you really love to optimize. <laughs> yeah, because you're going to be doing it no matter what at some point. Yeah. So there you go. Um, if you want to see more content like this in the future, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And make sure to hit the notification bell to get notified when we put out new videos.